AMD's Ryzen is still the best. All right guys, now that the AMD fans have left, let's talk about these new Intel Z490 motherboards. There's some pretty cool stuff in here. We'll see if it's gonna be enough to make Intel stay competitive. Of course, AMD Ryzen has been doing great aside from the joke. So let's talk about some of these really cool motherboards and let's see if there's anything that piques our interest. Let's get started. Hey guys, Tiago with Classical Technology here. Remember to smash that like button, subscribe, leave a comment below. Let me know if you're planning on getting these new Z490 motherboards. If you guys have been following the news, Intel has finally announced their 10th generation mainstream processors. Chief amongst these are going to be the 10 core 10900K. Now it's kind of a pretty cool processor. We're talking about 10 cores, 20 threads, up to 5.3 gigahertz thermal velocity boost. So it's definitely pretty interesting, especially if you think about that this is coming in around the $500 range. That's pretty incredible considering a few years ago, a 6950X, which was not as good as this, was almost $2,000. So that's definitely a pretty incredible leap in performance. But today, let's talk about a few motherboards that have been announced. As an enthusiast, some of these motherboards are actually really, really interesting. I like the different styles and the different things, so I'm going to go through some of the ones that piqued my interest. So first, let's start with some of the Asus motherboards. Now, they did announce a bunch of them, but I'm going to talk about some of the most interesting ones, as I think the motherboard landscape for the mainstream has definitely changed a bit in the last few years, partly due to AMD's Ryzen. If you guys remember, when Ryzen came out last year, the X570 motherboards, for the first time, AMD actually got some really nice and high-end motherboards, such as the Formula from Asus, um, they got the Godlike from MSI, Boards like that that typically were reserved for the upper tier of Intel processors for the first time came out to AMD and with that definitely came a bit of a price jump and that price jump has translated itself over to the Intel side. So from Asus, a couple of really, really interesting motherboards. The number one that really piqued my interest and that I'm most likely going to get just for my own personal use is going to be the Apex. Now the Apex motherboard is going to be primarily directed more towards an overclocking type of system. In conjunction with Intel's 10900K, which is a pretty amazing CPU, a 10 core 20 thread CPU, I think this CPU is going to overclock really, really nicely. Of course, it's going to run pretty hot, but I think in general, it should overclock really well. And in my opinion, one of the coolest boards to pair it with is with an Asus Apex motherboard. Last generation of Z390, this motherboard wasn't in the United States, but thankfully it's come back around and it definitely is. I remember the Z270 generation board. It's always been a really cool motherboard. X299 has had this as well. Um, it's one, it's a little bit more of like a no frills motherboard motherboard, like I said, more directed towards overclocking. Um, and for me personally, that's the board I want to go with. Um, if it wasn't for the Z390 formula motherboard that I currently have in my system um, with the 9900K, most likely I'd get the Z490 formula as I think this motherboard is also really, really awesome. It's definitely of all time, the formula series are one of my most favorite motherboards. But considering I have the Z390 version, there isn't enough to really justify that difference. The only thing that almost pushed me to get the Z490 formula is that EK Waterblocks has released a nice little bridge to go over the VRM area. Now this looks really really cool. It almost looks like a mono block of sorts but basically you still have to have the EK Velocity water block underneath and on top to make the connection between the VRM on the formula motherboard. For you guys that don't know the formula motherboard is the one that's geared towards water cooling um, which I'm going to do in the Apex anyway but it's geared more towards water cooling you can water cool your VRMs which are right above the CPU and traditionally you would just sort of run your tube to the VRMs and connect it like that but for the first time EK has made a really nice little bridge that they call it um, I do want to try this in the future but probably not right away as I said I do want to try the Apex that feels a little bit fresher and newer to me considering I have the Z390 uh, formula already and unfortunately this EK bridge is not going to work on the Z390 it's primarily for the Z490 but that's probably a project way down the road when I get board of maybe the other motherboard or something like that so for now the apex and the formula 
definitely pretty amazing. If you guys have never done a build with the Asus Formula motherboards, I think they're absolutely amazing. If the Z490 version is anything like the Z390, build quality was exceptional. Um, it felt really, really heavy. Like the features are awesome. Of course, you get to water cool those VRMs, which gives you really unique different things that you can do when you're water cooling. Um, if I didn't have the Z390 version, that's definitely the board I would go with. In fact, the Z390 version is what's currently in my case labs case, which I consider my coolest build, no pun intended, full of water cooling. Um, but since I have that, I definitely want to try the Apex. It has a lot of really cool overclocking features and just for me personally it's kind of it has a little bit of a special connotation since I have used the Apex boards in the past so I'm really looking forward to those two. Another note about these two motherboards in terms of pricing, I think the Apex is actually priced pretty fairly at around $399. I mean, that's about what the new Z490 Hero motherboard is priced at, and I personally think the Apex is just a little bit more special. Now, of course, the Formula motherboard is going to be, I think, $599, which is what the AMD Formula motherboard was. The Z390 motherboard was a lot cheaper. I believe it was maybe around $440 or something like that. But of course, like we mentioned, since then, motherboard prices definitely have gone up. So I definitely think for $399, the Apex is definitely priced pretty well considering what special board that it is. It may be even one of those boards that are hard to find after the initial run and be sold out later, just because I know a lot of people love this motherboard and it seems to be priced pretty fairly compared to some of the other ones, even like the Formula or the Extreme motherboard. And now getting to the Extreme motherboard, it is, like the name implies, Extreme. It pretty much has all of the features that you could want. It's extremely well built. Um, this is a fantastic motherboard as well. One of my favorite motherboards is going to be the X299, the Rampage 6 Extreme, which is sort of a cousin to this motherboard. So I really appreciate these high-end motherboards. And it's crazy to think that even something like the Rampage Extreme Back when it came out, it was a very expensive motherboard, you know, six or seven hundred dollar range. And I thought that was pretty expensive, but it made sense since it was on the HEDT platform. You can throw an 18 core processor there. So now to see a mainstream motherboard at 750 bucks, it's definitely pretty incredible seeing how far and how much motherboard prices have changed. But anyway, it is a fantastic motherboard. It's definitely extreme. Um, I personally like the Apex and the Formula a little bit more just because I think the Apex has a lot of really cool overclocking features. It's a very special motherboard. Um, the formula is awesome for water cooling. And of course, the Extreme has most of those elements, and it's definitely going to be the most expensive motherboard if that's what you're going for. And of course, if you're not particularly interested in these more expensive motherboards, Asus does have a nice lineup like the Hero that we mentioned, even the regular Strix version. I've used that before, and I think the motherboard is pretty awesome, which has a nice blend of RGB. GB in futures while not being extremely expensive. So to summarize, these Asus motherboards definitely are very, very interesting. They do bring back a lot of classic things. And of course, adding all these new technologies like Wi-Fi 6, which I've been using on X570, I think it's great to have faster Wi-Fi speeds. That way, before you could never really game with Wi-Fi back in the day, just because Wi-Fi wasn't as reliable. But now Wi-Fi, especially Wi-Fi 6, you're definitely getting much, much better performance. And it's definitely feasible to play competitive games with Wi-Fi, even though understandably, a lot of people still want to plug in their Ethernet cable. They feel that's going to give them the best performance. A lot of cases it will, but if you can tune your network and use some of this newer technology, I think you'll be surprised at how good Wi-Fi 6 actually is. And some other motherboards which really piqued my interest as well. Of course, on the high end, we're going to have MSI's godlike motherboard. Now, I actually went into the MSI X570 godlike when the 3900X came out. Um, and it's definitely a great motherboard, fully featured, looks pretty cool. Um, but it, you got to remember, it's an expensive motherboard. It's going to come in at around 700, 750 bucks. The X570, as well as the new Z490, it's definitely a very expensive motherboard. A lot of times I felt like maybe the Ace version or the one that's almost half the price did like 95% of what the board did. I really liked it. It was really cool that AMD finally got a top tier motherboard like this. But of course, it's very expensive. And the same thing with the Asus Extreme version, you can definitely get 95% of the motherboard's performance and features with something a little bit cheaper, like MSI has their Ace series of motherboards, which you still get a great looking motherboard with a lot of features for a few hundred dollars less. 
that can definitely be substantial. So I would only recommend going with something like this if you're definitely doing like a world-class system and it's something you don't mind setting aside the budget for, even though of course you're gonna get diminishing returns on such an expensive motherboard. But of course the Godlike series is also legendary. One of my favorite iterations of it is the X99 version. I remember I did a build in that with the red version. They had the carbon and the red version and that motherboard back in the day was awesome. If I'm not mistaken, I think it was the first motherboard that had RGB lighting on the motherboard and if you guys watch the channel you know that we really like RGB lighting I mean just look behind me here I think it adds a lot of really cool little looks of course you don't have to overdo it you can just do one color but RGB lighting has definitely been one of the really cool things and these motherboards are generally very very well built but believe it or not the motherboard I kind of really really like in this new MSI range it's going to be the MSI gaming carbon but in partnership with EK water blocks Basically, this motherboard is going to come with a built-in monoblock for the area. Now, the monoblock usually cools the VRMs as well as the processor. And it really fills out the CPU area. You get to see the liquid going in. Of course, EK Waterblocks does offer different monoblocks for different motherboards. But the interesting thing here is, is that this is going to come with the monoblock already. Now, the MSI Gaming Carbon motherboard, generally it retails somewhere in the $260 range or something like that. So I'm assuming that monoblock is probably going to add $100 to $140 to the price or something like that. I haven't actually seen this motherboard yet for pre-order. I just saw couple of teaser images on the announcement um, so I'm not too sure what the price is going to come in that could really be a very interesting motherboard just because it looks really really cool with that monoblock you don't have to get a separate monoblock everything's already done for you um, EK have done this a lot with the MSI Seahawk EK cards where it basically comes with a CPU block before as well as some other things like the formula motherboard is actually in partnership with EK as well so they definitely have a history of doing this and I absolutely love it anytime Time they do some type of integration into another component with water cooling already there i think it's amazing it adds another cool little nifty element to your build um, like i said i've used the formula before in that same computer i'm using two ek seahawk cards they're really really beefy big cards with a you know pre-mounted ek block on there so it's definitely very cool so i'm really looking forward to doing a build in this msi gaming carbon in partnership with ek and i think eventually when that comes out, I may move one of my MSI Seahawk EK cards to that build. That way everything is EK and MSI. I think it might make a really cool theme build. Right now I'm actually running 2080 in SLI in my formula build, which as you guys know, SLI is a little bit iffy. You get great performance sometimes, but most of the time not really. It's mostly just there, just for the aesthetics. So I may just bring that down to a one GPU system and use that other GPU on a build like with the MSI Carbon motherboard. I really like that. That's really cool of EK to be doing that. Um, and aside from the MSI godlike that's definitely one of the most interesting motherboards i think to come out from msi so to summarize these msi motherboards definitely pretty interesting especially the ek one that's pretty unique i don't think we've had a motherboard that comes with a monoblock like that so definitely looking forward to seeing that and to keep going some other cool motherboards coming out ASRock has an Aqua motherboard. X570, they also released something similar. Now, these are going to be very expensive top tier motherboards. Now, these are going to be over $1,000 for the Z490. Of course, it's to be expected. It's a very high end motherboard. Probably the reason for that cost is just because so much of it is already water cooled. You just have to basically slap your CPU in there, do the tubing, and things like that very cool motherboard you can see some insane builds with this it's nice that they're continuing this in the z490 of course they're going to have their regular line like the tai chi motherboards are coming back as well um, i've actually had the x299 tai chi xc motherboard i always really like them especially in the x299 uh, flavor they have really good vrms back in the day the initial run of x299 motherboards didn't have the best vrm performance the asrock tai chi was one of the ones that definitely had it better than other ones and especially the XC version which they basically updated just to make sure it can properly cool those processors and here it's back in the Z490 version so these two from ASRock are definitely two very interesting motherboards of course Gigabyte is also gonna have some really cool motherboards their master series um, I've tried the X570 master motherboard 
very good motherboard, has a lot of great features, priced pretty fairly for a nice high-end build, and of course, even more interestingly, is going to be their Water Force type motherboards, just like the ASRock motherboards. These are going to be heavily water-cooled motherboards. Once again, they're going to be coming in over $1,000, so they're very high-end motherboards, but they'll look absolutely stunning in the right build, and it's definitely a motherboard you can keep for a very long time, especially considering since we should be getting two generations of upgradability on the Z490 platform if Intel's previous activities are any indication. And of course, if you're doing a mini ITX system, we're also getting a smattering of different mini ITX motherboards. Most of these seems like it's stuff that we've had before, like the ones from Asus and from ASRock and Gigabyte. Um, so there's nothing completely revolutionary here, here, but definitely a lot of really good motherboards coming back. Definitely a lot of these interesting motherboards are going to be the ones that are tied to water cooling. Like we mentioned the one where you, the formula where you can put the EK bridge or the MSI version where it comes with the monoblock, you know, the formula itself, um, the Apex I'm very excited for, the Godlike is back. So there's a lot of very, very cool motherboards for doing insanely high-end builds or even regular mid-tier builds. You get a lot of really nice options. Asus Hero is back again, $399. It's the same price as the Apex. I still can't wrap my head around that. Just because in my mind, I thought the Apex would have been at least $499 or more or something like that. Just because it feels more like a niche special motherboard. But anyway, these are the motherboards that I'm most looking forward to. And as soon as I can get my hands on one, most likely the first one is going to be that Apex. I'm going to give you guys a more in-depth look at the features, how the motherboard board is, give you guys more details, and maybe even compare it with some of the ones that we spoke about today. Today is just a preliminary view. They haven't been released yet. The official release date should be May 20th. Now, I haven't seen the CPUs up for pre-order, but the motherboards definitely are up on Newegg. So if you guys want to hop on there and take a look at the pricing and everything that's available, you get to see a lot of the features and things of that nature. I, for one, am definitely very, very excited. As soon as I get my hands on one, I'm going to do a more in-depth video, the features and what I think about the motherboard, and I definitely want to pair it up with a 10900K 10-core processor, overclock it as much as I can on that Apex motherboard. Hopefully, the processors will be readily available, and it won't be crazy hard to find. Like, historically, some of these have been hard to find when they're initially released, almost like a paper release. Even AMD's 3900X was difficult in the beginning. Of course, later on, you get wide availability, but in the beginning, it can be a little bit hard. But hopefully, I'll be able to get my hands on one. Worst case, if I can, I'll try one of the little bit lower-end SKUs. A lot of very interesting processors in the 10th generation. Fairly well priced, nothing seems to be too overpriced, so I'm definitely looking forward to seeing how these perform and how these motherboards pan out both aesthetically in a nice water cooled build as well as future wise and see if some of the improvements are great. Alright guys, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys on the next video.